Hello everybody and welcome to yet another video. Today we are playing Volenfell, a Dwarven Ruin or Excavation Site. It is an instance designed for people between level 35 and 36. And besides a lot of sand you will also see the inside of a Dwarven Ruin. And what I really like about this instance is the fact that they've put lions in here. I like lions. It's a nice change because otherwise you're just killing humanoids all day long. The trash mobs are pretty easy. Uh, they are not so big compared to other instances and they are very easy to get through so you should have no problem getting to the bosses. The first boss is a lion and he's a rather insignificant one. He hasn't even got a name, he's just called Desert Lion. And he only has one important ability, which is a fear. So you can release yourself from the fears by pressing both mouse buttons. But for the sake of the video, I'm letting myself get in feared over here. Like that. But besides a fear, he does really nothing and it's just a warming up for the fights to come. The second boss is a lot more interesting and divided in four phases. So he could be a raid boss even. The first phase is just a bunch of ads, which you should kill and then the boss will appear. So this is the second phase. As you might expect, if you see a guy with a big ass axe like this, you can be pretty sure he does a power attack. So just block those. The second thing he does is this AoE. Right now I'm running away from it, but there's a better way to deal with it, which I'll show you in a minute. Because what I'm doing the next time is right here. I just raise my shield and as you can see I hardly take any damage at all. And it has the advantage that the boss stays in place. Which is always a good thing when you're tanking. You don't want a boss running around all the time, especially if he does AoE. After phase 2, he grabs a staff from his chest and he basically becomes a fire mage. Um, like other mages, he cannot be tanked anymore. You can taunt all you want, but you will not get his attention. He just attacks random party members and he will set the whole place ablaze with these fire AoEs you can see. The third ability he has is a fear, which will come from the fire spirits. There you've got one. And once this phase is over, he will resurrect or summon a gargoyle. As you might expect from a gargoyle, he does a petrify attack. It's a huge cone attack and always directed at your party members. So as you can see over there my whole party is petrified. Which could be a problem of course, especially with this AoE. 
It's an AoE that lasts for a pretty long time, is rather devastating, and you should get out of it as soon as you can. So once again you can see my party members being petrified. The person he is attacking however is immune to the petrify. This fight is uh, running back and forth, trying to keep him away from the raid and it's a really good idea if you're doing DPS in this fight uh, that you spread out a bit to make sure only one or two people get hit by the petrification and not your whole group. This is a little boss or small boss inside the Dwarven Ruins. It's a fire beetle. He has four adds, which should be taken care of first. And he has two abilities. One you just saw, which is his fire AoE attack. And this is the other, which is like a, a teleport or a blink. And he will appear behind the person he is aggroing or attacking. But besides that, it's not a problem because I am not tanking bosses in the middle of my group anyway. So if he appears behind me, it should actually not be a problem. Because I tend to tank bosses away from my group. This is also a minor boss. I think in other games this type of creature is called a basilisk. Um, he has two abilities. One is a till swipe and the other is an AoE. You can see till swipe here, it can be blocked. And the AoE will be visible here. First he will dig himself in and then he will reappear out of the ground and once he lands on the ground he will do some AoE. It's easily avoidable because he will land exactly at the same spot where he digs in. So here you can see it dig in, you just have to run away and he lands at the exact same spot. So pretty easy boss altogether. This is also a minor boss. The tricky part however is that the hallway leading here is filled with traps and the entrance before the boss room also has a trap in it. And our healer decided to wait in the doorway where there was actually some steam. You can see it in a moment. The boss itself has two abilities. One is his own AoE, which is a small AoE. And the other is a crossbow attack. He fires an explosive bolt to a party member right there and then that bolt will explode after a second. So it's important that you run away from your group once the boss shoots at you.
this is the final boss it's actually three bosses and what you're about to see is a really messy fight we were here for the first time we honestly had no idea what these guys would do and um, yeah that turned out to be rather messy and sometimes lucky as well if I see the health bars dropping however I've done this instance a few times now and I can tell you what each boss does the green one is actually the only boss that can be tanked and he will do a small cone attack and just follow the tank I decided to kite him because there's so much going on in the room uh, the red boss is pretty fast as well and does a constant AOE you can see it over there and the blue one just stands over there usually and fires into the sky and also doing AOE but it is targeted at random party members so right here we don't really have a tactic as you can see but what you should be doing is killing the blue guy first because he is the only boss that is not constantly moving around so the people that got aggro from either the green or the red boss should run and the others should just attack the blue one because he is the most easy boss to kill first besides the bosses share their damage so it doesn't matter which boss you kill first in the end no one will have much health left